Hey everyone, it's your host, Charlie Dixon. Before we dive into today's episode, I'm excited to share a special announcement about the 2024 Fall Wellness Summit coming up on November 2nd and 3rd, starting at 9 a.m. Pacific time. This free online event brings together four experts in heart-centered hypnotherapy, who will be sharing their knowledge on altered state therapy and the power of healing. It's an incredible opportunity to connect with the founders of the Wellness Institute, learn from top professionals, and network with peers in the wellness community. This event qualifies for CE credits. We're offering four CE hours exclusively for attendees of the two-day event. After the summit, you can purchase the credits for just $19.99, which includes access to the presentation videos and your official CE certificate. Don't miss out on our final summit of the year. Learn more and register for free at triadhq.com slash WIS. We look forward to seeing you there. Welcome to Behavioral Health Today, a podcast brought to you by the Triad Network. This podcast is designed to share trending topics occurring within the world and our communities and bring them a behavioral and mental health perspective. Welcome to Behavioral Health Today, a Triad production. I'm your host, Dr. Graham Taylor. Joining us today is Dr. Donna Poppenbeck. Donna is a seasoned educator and mental health practitioner with over 15 years of experience teaching holistic health approaches. With multiple graduate degrees and extensive experience in dual diagnosis treatment facilities, she founded Health and Wellness Online. This innovative online academy offers a variety of science-based courses on natural mental health and physical health for both professionals and the general public. Donna's mission is to provide accessible, research-backed alternatives to conventional medicine, empowering individuals to achieve holistic well-being. We're excited to have Donna with us today to discuss her work with Health and Wellness Online and to look at how nutrition can be a part of the foundation for good mental wellness. Donna, welcome to our show. Hi there. Thank you for having me. It is so nice to have you with us today. You know, Donna, we always love to find out first and foremost about people's backstory and what brought you into the field of nutrition and mental health and the inspiration behind your creation of health and wellness online. Give us a little bit of a backstory. Okay. Well, when I was in my early 40s, my own health started to fail. And I didn't know at that time that I was genetically wired for autoimmune disease. Hmm. But after losing my adopted daughter at a very young age, and frankly, after a lifetime of not eating particularly healthy foods, the autoimmune disease set in. And the medication I was put on was pretty horrible maybe just as horrible or worse than the disease itself. Mm -hmm. So after about two years on medication, I started looking for alternative ways to get well. And as I got back my health slowly over years of time, I took all of my very extensive education, my life work, my work experiences, and I created Health and Wellness Online because I wanted to show the world how to get your health back without necessarily needing to take strong medications. And think about this, your physical health is a starting point for your mental health. I really like that. You know, we're so, we're we're a society that doesn't want to put hard work into good things sometimes. We want the easy way, you know, rather than building an immune system up in ways that we can, we you know, take a shot or we do other things. And what you're talking about here is we're so apt to want to take. I, and I have some people in, in my personal life that have autoimmune related things as well. And they take some life-saving medications in, in important ways. But we don't oftentimes think of what can I do maybe at a very basic fundamental level to really address some areas of my health that have been or, or that can be positively influenced by the very things we're going to be talking about today. So let's jump in a little bit more here. When we talk about nutrition and mental health, what are some of the key ingredients and nutrients that play crucial roles in maintaining good mental health? Okay, so remember first that we have billions of people who inhabit this earth and they all have unique fingerprints. That kind of boggles my mind. Our bodies, like our fingerprints, are also not identical. So people will need different nutrition at different times of their lives. However, there are some basics that can be reviewed here that will be healthy for many, if not most people. 
So some of these are, here we go, vitamin C, which you can find, of course, in citrus fruits and leafy greens, vitamin D. Of course, we can get vitamin D from the sun, but most of us don't on a regular basis get enough. So if we eat salmon, cod, shrimp, and eggs, we'll get some that way as well. Also, we need vitamin B, like we need to find that in red meat, fish, eggs, dairy, leafy greens, foods like that. We need minerals like magnesium, selenium, zinc. We can find those in nuts, seeds, green veggies, and fish. Your brain also needs glucose for energy. Yes. So carbs are important, but you need good quality ones like fruits, vegetables, legumes. Um, and a word of caution, watch those starchy vegetables like white potatoes because they can mess with your insulin and they can impact your moods. Another thing, amino acids, which help build protein. They help with your neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, and they can also be found in red meat, poultry, eggs, and beans. Fatty acids are needed by the brain, and these include the omega-3s and 6s. Most of us have heard of those. We need to eat them because our bodies don't make them. Some examples, of course, we can get uh, most things in supplement form. We can get fatty acids in salmon, trout, tuna, beans, walnuts, spinach, etc. And remember that we need more omega-3s than 6s. So unfortunately, the typical American diet is going to be very pro-inflammatory because of the excessive omega-6s. You don't want that. Water is another very important thing for your brain. Your brain is made of lots of water. In fact, your whole body is made mostly of water. So it's important also to avoid a lot of caffeine, alcoholic beverages, foods with sugar, refined processed foods. If something says minimally, minimally processed, it's probably okay. Of course, the deep fat fried foods, you know, all the foods we love. <laughs> Yeah, those are all good. You know, when you go over a list like this, people think that if, well, I've got to make this, I got to make these huge changes. You know, I've got to do something that's uncomfortable and and it's going to be really, really hard. But when you when you remind us that these are doable things, vitamin C, the minerals, the carbs, the amino acids, the fatty acids, you know, good hydration. And these are good foods like salmon, the eggs, the cod, fruits, vegetables, omega, you know, the, the omegas that come in meat. This is not a, this is not an, you know, an, an awful, awful diet that we have to eat now. I got to go, oh, I got to change my, you know, food habits. We might need to steer away from, like you said, some of the processed foods that are just simple, easy, and convenient. But these are some of the foods that, you know, that, that we uh, are, are easily eat, you know, the processed foods. And you're right, they taste good and they're easy and they're convenient, yeah. but they're not that good for us. And if we just take a little bit of time to do something like this uh, yeah. that you're reminding us of, we can have some really great diets. And talking about kind of the idea of diet, or, and, and that, that's not oftentimes even the best word to use, but kind of the, the foods that we choose, yeah. but staying with that idea for a second, diets. There are diets like the, you know, the Mediterranean, the keto diets, even, you know, the intermittent fasting uh, process of eating. Give us some sense of how those types of food regimens can support our mental health with the things that you're saying are good for us to eat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Overall, make sure to get enough fruits and veggies, meats and poultry, fish, et cetera, into your diets. I always say be very careful of grains. I recommend avoiding wheat, even whole wheat, because the amino acid chain was genetically tampered with, which was a well-meaning thing. It, it was meant to improve the resiliency of crops, and it did just that. But now it's catapulting people into metabolic syndrome. Mm -hmm. The Mediterranean diet has been very well researched and it's known for lower risk of depression and other mental health disorders. I guess when I think of Mediterranean, I think of Greece, I eat a lot of Greek food <laughs> and um, I know they're um, you know very close to water. So they have a lot of fresh fish and seafood. Yes. So it's so healthy for you. And also it has nuts, poultry, dairy, eggs, red meats, you know, all the foods we mentioned above. Just a cautionary note to be careful with sweets because sugar and white flour are really not very good for us. <laughs> for as good as they taste, you know, a little tiny bit goes a very long way. Yes, it now, does. the ketogenic diets are helping with mental health. And there's been especially some research with the ketogenic diets and schizophrenia and how this helps with 
people diagnosed with schizophrenia or it calms down the neurons in the brain so it helps with the seizures. And this research led to something we now call metabolic psychiatry. Some side effects of psych meds, for example, were insulin resistance, gain weight, glucose intolerance, and others. So eating high levels of healthy fats, good amounts of healthy proteins, and some carbs, cooking real foods. Living that way, eating that way, so made excellent improvements to both the physical and the mental health of these people. And they were also, by the way, getting better sleep. Wow. Good foods are those that we mentioned earlier with modifications, of course, if you're doing keto and basically anything whole and not overly processed. Now, as far as intermittent fasting is concerned, I think those are things we have to be careful with. But remember that when you eat your last meal of the day until you wake up in the morning, you have done a fast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fasting maybe for a day or two or, you know, just make sure that you're getting enough nutrients to support your physiological and therefore mental processes. That's really good. Um, yeah. So in general, try to cook your own meals when you're eating out or somewhere else. Try not to eat the scrimmage that have been prepared with white flour, sugar, and also, if you can, try avoid eating foods with chemicals. We'll be right back after word from our sponsor. Are you preparing for a licensure exam in psychology, social work, marriage and family therapy, counseling, or behavioral analysis? AATBS is here to help. We have been supporting behavioral and mental health students to prepare for their licensure exams for more than 45 years. Working with over 1 million students to succeed on test day and move on to the next step in their career. With products ranging from comprehensive courses to quiz banks and delivered live online, self-study online, and in print, AATBS has test prep solutions that meet every student's needs and learning styles. Visit us today at aatbs.com. That's aatbs.com. And use promo code BHT15 to save 15% off your next purchase. Yeah, those are those are great tips. I have a story about uh, the keto diet. A, a buddy of mine that I paddle with, he was an ex-football player, big boy, and he wanted to lose some weight, and he went on the keto diet. And it was very, very healthy, just, you know, meats and vegetables is what he ate. And boy, he's lost probably about 40 pounds in a, in a healthy way, uh, looks strong, maintains strength. And he said, I was asking about some of the energy that he gets. He doesn't eat any carbs, nor does he eat any sweets. And I said, where are you getting your energy from? He says, well, the, the way the body kind of processes some of the foods that he's eating provides enough energy for him yes. to be able to, you know, we do, we do 18, 20 mile paddles. And he said, I've got all the energy I need. It's clean. It feels, it feels light. And, uh, but I did not know about the part around the schizophrenia and the lowering of the neuronal, you know, com components in the brain that really help with some of the uh, activation of things. That, that's a really wonderful finding. You know, we, um, we are hearing more and more about having a healthy gut and we hear about gut microbiome and, it is truly, you know, and it's addressed with you know, probiotics and prebiotics being beneficial. But this is legitimate. This is a really contributory area of our body and how to maintain a healthy microbiome, a healthy gut, if you will. Share with us a little bit about how mental health is impacted so significantly by a healthy gut with microbiome in there. So most of us have heard of the gut-brain barrier. Yes, the gut and the brain send lots of signals back and forth. So when your gut microbiota is not good, the communication with the neurotransmitters like serotonin, which by the way is mainly made in the gut, is broken. And this can influence our moods, our sleep patterns, and even our appetites. In addition to improving our diets, getting amino acid therapy with a trained qualified practitioner is a great idea because they actually heal the brain chemistry, not just manipulate the neurotransmitters. A friend of mine, Christine Veselek, she trains people to do amino acid therapy. Mm. Now, talking about good probiotics, you can find them, of course, in supplements. You can find them in yogurt with live cultures. 
in kefir, which is a fermented probiotic milk drink, in sauerkraut, which most of us know is a finely shredded fermented cabbage dish, and uh, kimchi, another fermented food, tempeh, a fermented soybean product, miso, a Japanese seasoning made with fermented soybeans, salt, and koji, which is a fungus. And many of us have heard of kombucha uh, tea, yeah. which is a fermented black or green tea. Anybody like pickles? They're fermented. <laughs> Watch the sugar, though. And uh, buttermilk. Now, a few examples of good prebiotics are something like a very small piece of a raw potato, a mm. small piece of a green banana, chicory root, dandelion greens, which are really healthy and they're extremely bitter. I don't like them myself. <laughs> Jerusalem artichoke. And now this is what I really like, the garlic, the onions, the leeks, asparagus, oats, yeah. apples, and things like that. Fantastic. Tell me, you, you mentioned something about different types of therapies. One was something related to serotonin, if I heard you right, and the other was related to an amino acid therapy. Can you tell us a little bit more about those two, if I, if I heard the first one right, serotonin? Is that correct? Well, serotonin is, will be enhanced by a healthy gut. Okay. So you may not know that I am a drug counselor and a prevention specialist yeah. in addition to a few other things. <laughs> and so when I was researching, I came across people doing amino acid therapy yeah. for people who were just starting recovery. People who start to recover from taking drugs, they have a lot, a lot of problems with their moods. They have withdrawal. Uh, this amino acid therapy was working so well for them because mm -hmm. it was repairing their biochemistry uh, with very few to no uh, side effects. Wow. And I wish more people would do that, both in the recovery field. It's equally, equally good for any kind of mental health work, too. Well, that's exciting. How is that typically administered, the amino acid therapy? You can get it administered via IVs or you can take it orally. In, in my mind, at least, IVs would be faster acting, but they work very well for many, many people just by taking amino acid pills. You've got to take the right amino acids in the right yes. amounts. I know that if someone wanted to do something along those lines, but nece not, didn't necessarily want to do an IV or mm -hmm. do the pills, there's a lot of great foods. You know, eggs are kind of the complete yes. amino acid and some of the meats. Give us a, a kind of a reminder of some of the foods that hold these, you know, our, our amino acids are our building blocks for so many things around proteins. And give us a sense of the, the, the foods that we have access to that we can uh, really benefit from, again, that contain the amino acids that we need most. Well, amino acids can be found in most meats. I know um, eating red meat isn't very popular at the moment, but eating healthy red meat is, uh, for example, my body doesn't do well if I don't eat red meat. Yes. So mostly the proteins have uh, the amino acids in them if you're looking for the foods. It's very important to get ample amounts of healthy proteins. Yeah. Just a little disclaimer here. Uh, we grew up in the meat business. <laughs> Where Our family uh, it was the Taylor's Old Fashioned Meat Market. It was my uh, grandfather and my uncle and my dad, and we sold prime beef. And it used to be back in the day where we'd bring the bring the, uh, the, the beef in, we'd age it for 21 days and hind quarters and four quarters and sides of beef and we'd break it all down. And and uh, we had the straw hats, the bow ties and the white shirts and the red aprons and a uh, full service display of food. And it was really a wonderful, wonderful business to grow up in. So meat's really been a, a, a part of my life. And although I've, yeah. I kind of go back a little bit right now, I know that the, the it's a really healthy component, not, not you know, it doesn't have to be an excessive component, but uh, I know it's a really healthy component of our diets. It has some really good good stuff in there that allows for the amino acids to be attained and, and uh, built into. So yeah, fun story. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about, you know, how you weave into the work that you do, Donna, integrating nutrition, educating people, telling them how to weave it into their overall holistic wellness practices. How do you help folks do that? So your diet is perhaps the most important piece of the puzzle. But you also need to have time to calm down. So any mindfulness technique, even five minutes a day, will help you. You know, some people like to meditate, use binaural beats. Some people can just go for a walk, 
take a bubble bath, read a book, whatever helps you slow down and be able to live in the moment. Even a few days is enough to get grounded in that yeah. for the rest of your day. Now, most of us know exercise is very important, but both for physical and for mental fitness. Unfortunately, I have lost my two daughters. And I remember when my daughter passed away, I was falling into a deep depression. So one day I decided to go to the gym because I felt like I couldn't climb out of it. I got on the treadmill for literally five minutes, but it was enough to help me navigate through the depression that day and it helped me moving forward. Some people do well with acupuncture. Others do energy medicine, like balancing the energy fields using Reiki, Qigong, polarity, yoga, whatever floats your boat. How about time management? You know, sometimes we are running around hectic and get all stressed out because we don't manage our time well. There's lots of good information out there available to help people manage their time better. And how about improving the quality and the quantity of your sleep? I had to work on mine and it's better now. It can still improve. <laughs> you know, like I had to disconnect my TV, you know, anything that was electronic. I got blackout curtains for my windows. Mm -hmm. And that those things actually helped me get more sleep and better quality sleep. You know, Donna, what I so appreciate in your presentation today is all of these things that you're describing are attainable to us. There's nothing that we have to spend extra money on or we have to kind of go to someplace in the world to experience it or, 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 or be a part of it. These are all things that are accessible to us at a healthy grocery store or right outside or in a gym. And I couldn't highlight more emphatically with you that these holistic approaches, things that we can do, so complement the nutritional part of what we can use as the building blocks, things like the mindfulness, the biurnal beats. I just started listening to those this year and you can access programs on YouTube, they're free. Right. They'll just, they'll just right. play. If it's a little bit of music, with the, but the, by, you know, bees going back and forth by both sides of the brain, activating a very much of a relaxation, hitting delta, theta, and alpha waves in different, different programs. Mm -hmm. They're great for focusing. So that's a great reminder to us. Another thing that's attainable and it's, uh, accessible to us very easily. I also watched on uh, Netflix, maybe you've heard of it too, a show called Blue Zones. And I've become kind of a... <laughs> kind of a pseudo evangelist for this show. It's a, it's a wonderful show. It's about five episodes or about 40 minutes uh, episodes, five of them or so called Blue Zones is, a, is the name of the series. And there are about five or six different Blue Zones throughout the year. Blue Zone is where there are people living to or over 100 years old, a show about centurions. And they're saying, what are you doing? And these aren't people just on life support either. These are people that are thriving in their lives enjoying life, playing, dancing, moving, socializing, cooking good foods together. And the things you're describing today remind me very much of the people in this show. I'd recommend it to all of our listeners to watch because again, like you're saying, Donna, these things are achievable. Sometimes we, can, we seem to be reminded of what we have access to and then do them. And then like you just said, I spent five minutes on the treadmill. I came out and it helped me through my depression that day. Not, it wasn't like a, you know, an hour workout where you're, you know, burning, you know, a thousand calories and sweating, you know, and having to rehydrate. No, it's five minutes. And these little things oftentimes have big returns, don't they? They do. They do. Yeah, yeah. they really do. So movement, sleep. Yeah, sleep's a, sleep's a hard one. That, that, that changes as we age too. But I like the idea of the blackout blinds and removing any of those things that could be too overly stimulating to us. You know, we're, uh, I, I want to hear a little bit more about some of the success stories and you've been willing to share with us already your story. I think people relate to stories because if we see somebody else doing it, we know that maybe it's attainable to me too. I'd love to kind of open back up for you to share another story or maybe even a little bit more about your own. I'll give you the, the reins around the decision on this, but aspects of a story that people can say, hey, there's some of that in me too. Talk to us a little bit about a success story and weaving in these holistic approaches along with good nutrition that can change, literally change and enhance one's life. Thank you. Yes, I would like to share a little bit more of my own story because I know it better than I know anybody else's story. So in my early 40s is when my health started to break down and it was after the death of my adopted daughter. 
um, my diet and my childhood experiences had led me to being pretty unhealthy physically. And I had undiagnosed clinical depression probably since I was a young child. Um, after about two years of being on oral chemotherapy, I started my first alternative therapy. I began to take supplements based on my bio meridian or energy testing. I miraculously, right when I started that, I no longer needed the chemo. I have a platelet disorder, so I produced too many platelets. And right after starting that, literally the next day after starting my vitamins, the platelet count flatlined, it froze in place. So it was too high for normal, but too low for um, medication. Amazing. Yes. And um, later I began to learn more about nutrition. Uh, you know, this, this is a healing that's been going on for years now. And I was able to incorporate better food into my day. And my depressed episodes completely disappeared. I did continue to work in therapy sessions for a longer time, though, because it was helping me with this and with many other things since I had a very dysfunctional childhood. So you were very active in kind of a multimodal approach, but you grounded it again in the nutrition, hence our show today. But these are things that actually work. I mean, the, these are the next day kind of experience. Or, or, or immediate, you talked earlier about being on the treadmill for five minutes, I walk out the rest of my day, my, my, my depression is manageable. These aren't things that I've got to wait for a year to kick in or to see if the chemo kicks in. I'm not putting aside any medications that can be helpful to save one's life. Those are necessary at times. But if, if nothing else, start with the things you're describing, particularly the nutritional piece, to start with a really solid foundation and a really great cornerstone being in place. That's an amazing, so, and I'm sorry for your losses. Those sound significant. And uh, I, I can't imagine that piece. I've got three kids of my own. Yeah. And so I can not imagine that piece. So my heart goes out to you and that it is hard. I can't imagine a life journey uh, that comes afterwards. What has nutrition continued to be in your life after you began to reset this cornerstone very early on? What's life been like since? And what do you experience just in terms of your own vitality and energy. What's it like now? Okay. Well, my life now, I'm 73. Okay. I hope to live to be at least 110. All right. Very good health. You're going to be part of the blue zones. <laughs> <I hope> so. <laughs> They're going to come I visit you. something to prove here. Say, hey, Donna, what are you doing? <laughs> yes. And I, I want to add to, I fall off the wagon all the time. You know, sometimes I get stuck in some sweets. I'm a chocolate Oh, don't tell us you eat sweets, Donna. Come on. <laughs> but I just Climb back out of it again. <laughs> That's right. Get back on. And people with autoimmune disease often, anyway, when they're healing, they heal better than they heal worse. Than they heal better than they yes. heal worse. You want to, you want to have, you know, you want to feel better slowly, slowly, slowly better and better. But sometimes it's not like that. Sometimes it's up and downs. But I noticed along the way that my downs, I was were higher and my highs were higher. So that was enough to help keep me moving on. So yes, I have lots of energy. I take so much better care of myself now. You know, I'm juicing. I see a chiropractor. I have an energy practitioner. I have a, a medical doctor too. I watch my nutrition and um, I try to relax. I try to listen to my body. And, um, you know, I'm a person who likes to be the person that I write about in my courses yes. and in my blogs. So having said that, I feel like I I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to yes. be a living version of all the things that I'm saying because I, I want to inspire other people, but they can do the same thing too. I also want to be realistic about the ups and downs of it, but you're still getting better and you're still feeling good. My energy is through the roof compared to what it used to be like Fortunately now, because I work for myself, I'm able to rest when I feel the need to rest. I'm able to make lots of decisions about myself that I couldn't when I was younger because my time belonged to somebody else. Yeah. But overall, it's it's just been great. I'm in a much better mood than I used to be. And I look forward to my work and my interactions with people. I very much enjoy my time with people. I have a lovely granddaughter 
and um, she's about to go to college now. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, indeed. So uh, we're very close, and um, I'm really enjoying, you know, helping her through the whole process of growing up, too. It sounds like you're living your best life, you know, and, and uh, you're intentional about it, and we all get to be, we all have control, and we, we get to either, you know, be a part of the controlling things in our lives, or we let we let other things control us. And I love the approach you're taking. I also like, and I, I always appreciate when someone lives in congruence, you know, my a colleague and I that I work with, we do a lot of trainings and we encourage practitioners to do their own work. We're basically saying we can't take people that we see, the patients that we see to places that we haven't gone ourselves. So we want to live a congruent life. And there's a real congruence in your message and the life that you're living, which I so appreciate. And I also appreciate the idea that this is not about perfection and walking that line just so every day. It's about sometimes we fall off. The main thing is how we get back on. And uh, I, I, I love the idea of removing any kind of judgment or shame or uh, any kind of perfectionistic attitude that can be discouraging and kind of cause us to go back to the things that, you know, we don't want to have to do. But what a wonderful message of congruence and encouragement. You know, I would love our listeners as we're talking to you, you've given us so many great ideas and some tips and some good foods, et cetera. Again, encouraging us to realize that all of these things are available for us to do without a whole lot of work, maybe just changing some behavior sometimes. But I would love you to leave us with kind of a closing word here. What are maybe just one or two simple, actionable steps that our listeners can do today to improve maybe their nutrition for better mental health? And maybe what are some of the best ways that you found personally and in your work to help folks stay motivated and committed to this wellness journey? Okay. Well, first of all, I recommend writing down everything that you put in your mouth for a few days, mm -hmm. because when you do that, you can notice certain patterns that you might not have been noticing before. Mm -hmm. And I say also do start doing a slow elimination of foods and drinks with sugar, chemicals, white flour, you know, all the junk fruits we love so much. By the way, you can cook almost any meal that you love in a much healthier fashion. Mm. You just have to be willing to do it. Start adding meals with whole foods, you know, fruits and vegetables, proteins, things of like, like that. I also recommend that you maybe jot down your thoughts and feelings during the day, especially those that are connected with what you eat. And again, look for patterns. And um, it's always helpful to connect with a, a good health practitioner of your choice, somebody you feel comfortable with. Really? And um, just starting to become aware of how much food choices may be either helping you or hurting you is a wonderful first step. Some of the foods which aren't healthy may be physically and mentally addictive. So be kind to yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day. Right. Have compassion for yourself. Don't put yourself down if you have some negative experiences and fall into old traps. And like we said before, if you fall down, just get up the next day and start over again. No negative judgments. We're all human. The only way you're going to lose this is if you give up. And I also think if you're finding it really difficult, maybe you can hook up with a health coach or a good friend or a therapist who is aware of how much food impacts our mental health. Boy, these are outstanding. I always like the idea, you know, all we have to have is a, is a day one. Just start. Just try something. I like the idea of we don't have to make big shifts in our lives. We just need maybe to do a slow elimination. Sometimes I, when I work with folks that are diabetic, I say, you know, rather than two scoops of rice, which is pretty customary here in Hawaii where I live, uh, maybe go with a scoop and a half or a scoop and three quarters and just begin to slowly get used to something, you know, decreasing in your life. And maybe you keep a scoop, but maybe you begin to slowly eliminate in another area that can be beneficial to you. The idea of just get started. And uh, I think that's a great that's a great encouragement and a nice gentle nudge that you're giving us. Well, Donna, we're coming near the end of our time today, and I would love folks to see more and hear more about you and know how to get in, in touch with you and what you're doing uh, with this holistic, life-fulfilling um, way of being. So how can our listeners learn more about you and uh, connect with you? Okay, well, they can first of all go to my website, which is healthandwellnessonline.org. 
And if you want to see the holistic guides, just click on it where it says holistic guides. And we have for a fairly low price too, because I, I believe in making things very accessible. You can get downloadable PDF courses. I have courses on mindfulness, going from grieving to happiness, immunity, herbs, staying healthy while growing older, movement, treating ADHD naturally, parenting styles, and a host of others. And by the way, I welcome suggestions for more topics to write on. These courses, I hope people will find very encouraging and full of evidence-based information. So learning about these things is an important first step to take. Then you can strategize and plan a course of action that makes sense for your own individual life. And by the way, I have a lot of blogs that are free for anybody to read. Well, I would very much encourage our listeners to check out Donna's site. It has a plethora of opportunities to take these courses. I, I reviewed some of them in preparation for the show today, and you do such a nice job with those. And there's such a variety uh, of topics that relate to just about anything anybody could have some interest in. So, well, Donna, it's been great. You're, you're, you're a delight. And it's so nice, uh, such a lovely guest. It's so nice to have you with us today. Thanks for what you're doing, just your generosity and spirit, what you're offering folks just in terms of your own knowledge and uh, the different opportunities folks can access your site. Yeah, opportunity maybe to work with you and find ways to enhance their life, both holistically, just in general around their mental health and also their physical health. So thank you so much for being a part of our show today. It's been great to have you. Thank you for having me. I also want to thank you, our listeners, for dropping by and joining Don and me today. It's always great to have you with us. I want to remind you that this episode and all of our resources can be found on our webpage at triadhq.com slash BHT. Thanks again for being with us on the show. And we'll look forward to having you back with us next time on Behavioral Health Today. We appreciate all the support from our community. And if you like our show, one of the best ways you can support it is by giving us a five-star rating and leaving a review. Behavioral Health Today is a podcast part of the Tried Behavioral Health Network, all rights reserved.